All right, guys, here we go. We're going to start thinking about a few things today. Now, one of the most famous things that they used to do back in the old days was sing silently. Now, what does that mean? That means that I think the music in my mind, but I don't make any sound. <coughs> so I'm doing everything I would do if I'm singing. I'm taking a breath. And then I, th I feel like I'm singing. But the music is running in my head. <coughs> and I'm not letting it be heard. So let's see. If I have a scale, I'll, I'll, pick, a, I'll pick a tone. <coughs> Good morning. So I'm going... Long, 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 this does a number of things. It makes you sing slender. It makes you not overgive. You're not in your mind thinking, oh, or oh, or you, you don't do that when, you, when you're trying to think pure pitch in your mind. Anyway, that's the theory behind it. Some of us are so far gone, <laughs> we can make mistakes anyway. No matter how pure we try to be, we are already polluted. So the idea is to try to make your way through the pollution and find the purity of your pitch. Now, some singers, when they're doing contemporary music, they, have to, they really have to think hard and all this uh, dissonance and find their pitch, and they really sing well. And then you give them a piece of standard music, some easy melody, they don't sing very well, see? When you, when you really have to think hard to keep your music all together in your mind, you realize you're getting more pure uh, by the minute, and the more you do it, the more you're left with nothing but the pitch. The body then responds by saying it's only going to do what it needs to do to get the pitch. That's all. And not all this extra, all the stuff. People don't do all this stuff. So if I'm going to do it, what do I think now? In my mind, I'm continuing. If you have a friend, have them snap their fingers in the middle of your scale and you go silent, but you keep singing mentally, and they'll let you go a little bit, and then they'll snap the fingers again and you and you continue with sound, and then you begin to find out, wait a minute, did I lose the sound? Did I lose the pitch? What happened? <laughs> did I, where would I go? Those of you who think constantly about the, 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 the focus and the lifting your palate and all that, you're not thinking the right things, guys. You're supposed to take a breath before you sing, and then you start singing. One thing you do when you sing a lot and you're singing one opera tonight, but you got another opera tomorrow night, maybe one after that, you'll find singers, the smart ones, who are sitting in the dressing room when they're not on stage, like during the, let's say during the second act of Butterfly, the tenor's not on the stage. So all during the second act, I'm sitting there running my music for what I'm doing tomorrow night. But I can't make noise, so I have to do it all silently. See? And after a while, you begin to realize that you, you silently make your breath pauses. You silently make your effects happy, sad, or angry. And uh, it, it, it becomes a very much a mental game. Telling It's like a computer telling the robot what to do all the time. So I'm going to try to sing, you know, this. Let's say. Have I got that pitch in my mind? No. Oh, 
just now because my mind sort of wandered a little bit, see? Hey, at my age, if you can think longer than two notes, you're, <laughs> you're, you're ahead of the game. So let's go. Let's take a deep breath, way down behind us. And now I'm ready to sing. See, I'm going to sing uh, Traviata. Per me non va di letto, non va di letto, non gliarei per me non va di What am I doing there? How do I do that? What, what the heck is going on there? See? Questo è quello, bebe, i dorno di dormi, le mie cose, l'imbarno c'è. Ah, you won't believe how this sort of cleans up your act. It really cleans up the voice and it makes you stop doing any extracurricular activities that are not necessary. All you need is a breath and then dictate to the vocal apparatus what pitch you want to sing, what vowel you want it to be, and that all happens as uh, obedience to a clear command. I'm going to say, sing ah. That sound, it sounds easy, doesn't it? Uh, in fact, I thought I might make another whole separate tape about uh, finding the correct resonance and maintaining it. So we'll just do pitch right now. But the truth is, I can go, oh, 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 and you'll understand my words. Eins, zwei, drei, eins, zwei, drei. So why not, what's, why not sing them then? What's wrong with them? Well, people know vocally for history, history purposes, if you do anything, uh, artificial in your, in your throat, your, your voice is less effective. They know that. See, so if I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to find a totally neutral throat and breathe, and, and every time I take a breath, my throat relaxes and lets go, and then I go, So if I'm singing along, I'm singing, uh, whatever. Uh, the pitch wasn't true. I sort of relax for a moment. I mean, for me, it's morning, I'm warmed up, and I'm just getting started, and this is part of why, why it's good to do this kind of stuff. It sort of gets you in, in, the, in your singing mode, and uh, it puts you in the program that operates everything. So I'm going to breathe, and then I'm going to try to think the music. And, and let's face it, it's, it's not so simple to think, <laughs> to think the music all the time. And the bigger the music you think and you do, the more dramatic the music is, the more complicated it gets about what you have to do in the emphasis and acting and mode and color and, and declamation. So that's why, traditionally, uh, all the young singers, especially, are supposed to sing only lyric music. And very gradually, as you mature and get strong in these particular ways, you can start adding things like, like uh, some kind of declamation, some kind of drama, color. Shall I, what if I'm crying? Shall I cry? Let's see. What am I thinking in there? As I wake up and I get going here and, and I refresh constantly the desire to sing a pure pitch and to remember my pitches, then the old machine starts trying to to help me, try, start, really tries to obey me. What am I telling him what to do? Uh, and I'm, I'm supposed to, it's like Buddha said, you know, bring the body and mind to follow, then you get right thinking, right doing, right being. You want to be a great singer, you must do the right things. You want to do the right things, you must think the right things. But how do I learn what to think? Bring the body and the mind will follow. So I'm going to take a breath. I'm only going to use my body. <laughs> I'm changing key 
in my mind, and when I open, when I let the sound come, guess what? The sound's a different key. All because what I did mentally. So you must learn to be a mental giant, and I wouldn't don't know who that is. There were people who were such fantastic singers, and they lost their voice, they had some emotional crisis, something lost their voice, couldn't sing anymore. Or something happens, they sing the wrong repertoire, and the the emphasis or the drama or something, emotion, something becomes more important than just purity of pitch. But see, when you're a great composer and you're writing uh, music, guess what? You're writing pitch. Therefore, our job, first, first and foremost, is to execute the pitch. What, and what did the composer write? See? And you're supposed to be able to, to decide if he wrote this. Miss the first note. No, think. Hard. It's a C. It's not a hard note. So what's hard is to purify my thinking. I think when I'm demonstrating, I'm something thinking about you and what I want to show you, and uh, I, I lose myself a little bit, right? Is it there? Boring. Well, it's, you will find that the more you do this, the better you will sing and the better you will sound and the conductor especially will love you. And you become the conductor's pet and all of a sudden you're getting all the, all the juicy jobs where you want so much, wants to get the chance to make recordings. He, he wants you to be, a, to be a singer and his cast. So uh, now let's go up a little bit and see what happens if we try to get a little higher. La la What am I really thinking? Am I thinking pure pitch or am I thinking some sort of sound? Am I looking for sound or am I thinking lift my soft palate? Or am I thinking pull my jaw down? What is that I'm thinking? What kind of commands am I throwing at my apparatus and expecting it to do all of these things? And you have people that open and raise palates and open their jaws and do that all the time. People sing like that. Right? And they go, What language do you know that is spoken like that? Right? If you keep the language pure and you just take pitch, what am I thinking? Help! No, what do I think really? Uh, I take a deep breath. I'm going to try to think that phrase. Oh, did I forget it in the meantime? Or is it a lot? No. So there's a kind of a memory factor going on also. I think that's why some of the old singers finally lose it. Because, you know, let's face it. They know what to do. They've been doing it for years and years and years. And all of a sudden, they start to sound like they're, they're, they're losing a little bit. And somehow, it's harder to think and harder to remember. Do I remember the words to something like, uh, I don't know, in La, La Boheme? Hear that pitch? You got it? If I go, I can start off pitch and then adjust it. If I've got a good ear, I can adjust it instantly and bring it, <coughs> and bring it on pitch. But I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to think the pitch and not have to adjust all the time. Some singers go, and they're doing this scooping and all this stuff all the time. And you realize the only reason is that nobody ever told them to think pitch. They told them to think sound, think lean, think attachment, think breathing, but they never taught them to think pitch. So they're using their ear, making a sound, and then adjusting that sound uh, to get it pure. So some of the ones that come in on the upper notes, right? <laughs> See? <laughs> and I can adjust it. <laughs> I can adjust it instantly, but how do I get the darn pitch to come to be there before I start singing? <laughs> See, I make a sound and adjust the pitch. 
o algo. Shalagram, signore. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think pure, pure pitches and not go uh, 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 between the notes. And it's, uh, it's, it, it, you can't imagine what the effect has on certain people like conductors. They, they, they just love it. They hear some singer singing like he has some idea about music. Are you kidding? <laughs> so this is something to think about. And uh, you can, you, any kind of vocalists you're doing normally, you can go ahead and do them, right? La, la, but what if my thought is this? La, is that what I'm thinking? What am I really thinking? I'm saying, hello, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. Now, I don't have to do anything, so take a breath. And I think the bitch. La, see? All right, I don't think I, we need to get more complicated than that one right now. So let's see, guys. Give it a try. See what you think. Bye.